this problem statement, we have determined the shear force and moment at point C and D. So here we have a beam with its supports, we have a roller and we have a hinge and we have the external forces being applied 500 pounds, 200 and 300 pounds. And we have all the, the dimensions here, the locations. Um, so now the first step always is find the support reaction. So let's go ahead and do that. So we start off by drawing the free body diagram with its um, the reactions at each of the supports. So we have at point B, we have a hinge. So we have a, a force along the X and the Y along the Y direction. And at A, we have a roller. So we just have a normal force, a Y. So let's go ahead and apply the sum of moments about point B. So for the re reaction at point A, we have negative AY times 14 feet. Of course, remember it's negative because it's um, the moment being caused with respect to point B is clockwise. Plus we have the external force 500 pounds times the perpendicular length, which is eight feet. This is positive. The 200 pounds, since it's going right directly um, to the point B, it's not causing any rotation here. So that doesn't, produce any moment and we have the 300 pound external force and it's going to in the clockwise so it's negative 300 times 8 feet so let's go ahead and solve for a y here so we have a y equal to 114.3 pounds so let's go ahead and then do the sum of forces along the y direction and the sum of forces along the x so the forces along the x direction you see we only have b x so b x is equal to zero, meaning we don't ha really have an x component uh, for the reaction at point B. Now let's go ahead and do a sum of forces along the y. So positive is up. We have 114.3, take away 500, take away 200, take away 300 plus by, which gives us by equal to 885. 0.7 pounds. So here are finally our reaction um, forces. Now let's go ahead and draw section C and um, find the internal forces. So now looking at point C, this is where we go ahead and split up this beam into its two sections. We have the left section of point C, we have this reactionary force that we just solved, the external force 500. And on the right side of the beam, we have the rest of the reactionary at point B and the external forces. Now you can actually um, decide either or section to go ahead and draw these internal forces and solve accordingly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the left hand side because there's less forces here to deal with than the right hand side, but you can actually use either section to solve for those those internal forces. So the convention that we have is that normal force at point C. We have the shear force going downward here, VC, and we have a bending moment in that beam, so MC. So the same, since I decided to go with this one, let's go ahead and apply the static equilibrium equations to this and solve for these unknown forces. So let's start off with the easiest. The sum of forces along the x direction is equal to zero. We see we only have one force along the x, which is NC, which gives us our answer. Our normal force here, internal normal force, is zero for NC. Now we could go ahead and do the sum of forces along the y direction. So we have the 114.3 pounds um, going in the positive direction, minus 500 pounds, minus VC, which is equal to zero. And we solve for VC, which is negative 385.7 pounds, which means we assumed it to be in the wrong direction. So 385.7 pounds. And the shear force is actually going upward for this internal force. So there's our shear force. Now let's apply the sum of moments with respect to point C. So we have the moment itself, MC, which is what we're trying to solve with respect to point C. And we have the 500 pounds causing a positive moment, so 500 times the perpendicular perpendicular distance to C, which is four feet, and the reactionary force, 114.3 pounds, is causing a negative moment in the clockwise direction, so it's 114 times the 10 feet. Now let's go ahead and solve for MC. 
So we get negative 857 pound feet um, for the moment, which basically tells us it's actually going clockwise here. So now with these internal forces, we have the bending moment as well as the shear force. We're actually able to determine whether this beam will be able to sustain the load or whether it will fail. Now this is this is something you'll learn once it comes to strengths of materials when it comes to analyzing whether uh, certain structures will fail and so forth. So now on to analyzing the shear and moment um, at point D. So now for section D, as previously mentioned, you could actually decide to do either or, to analyze either or portion of that section, either the right side or the left side. Now, um, on the right side, you see we only have one force being applied, so it's going to be a lot simpler, a lot less time consuming to, to solve using this segment. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the normal force at point D, we have the shear. Remember, the common convection conven convention is to draw it upwards here. V, D, and the moment at D is clockwise. M, D. So now we just analyze this free body diagram to solve for all the forces. Now you can see along the x direction we don't have any forces so we could already tell n d is equal to zero. Now for the sum of forces along the y direction we have the shear force d and the 300 pounds here. So v d is equal to 300 pounds of shear force. And now when it comes to the moment, um, let's go ahead and do the sum of moments. So the sum of moments with respect to point D counterclockwise is positive. We see that with using the regular sign convention, uh, MD is negative here. And the moment caused by the 300 pounds is also clockwise, so it's going to be negative 300 pounds times the perpendicular distance to D, which is 2 feet, and which gives us MD equal to negative 600 pound feet, um, which basically tells us the moment is opposite of what we assume. So it's actually, instead of going clockwise, it's actually counterclockwise. And here are your. Here is your moment and your shear. So this is how you go about solving for the internal forces developed in the structures in which we have external forces being applied. And this is very useful when you're taking your strengths of materials course. You Having these shear and moment values, you'll be able to determine whether the part will be able to sustain that load or whether it's going to fail. And so that's why being able to solve for internal forces is very important.